John, it's so exciting. Funny little Ruth. Isn't it beautiful? Oh, well, we don't have to admire her from here. I do have tickets, and we are sailing. I just have to have a little time to get used to everything. Everything's happened so fast, and besides, aren't brides supposed to be excited? Well, I'm aboard, bride. Welcome aboard, then. Thank you. Watch your step, please. <laughs> oh! Thank you. Not at all. Do you think we're going to leave on time? Uh, yes, ma'am, I'm sure we'll leave. Uh, the sea deck cabins this way. Yes, ma'am, they are, right down this way. And, uh... <laughs> yeah, I think we're down this way, darling. Yeah. <laughs> 12? No, that's not it. We get lost out here. B18 to B34. Oh, here we are. B16. Now, Mrs. Bowman. Oh, John, darling. Oh. Oh. Excuse me. That's quite all right. Well, that's the best I could do in a hurry. You like it? It's just perfect. It's the way I want everything to be for you, Ruth. From now on. It's the way everything will be, won't it? If I have anything to say about it. Oh, darling. I was such a mess when you met me. Just four weeks ago, imagine. Four weeks and two days, and you were not a mess. I was, too. <laughs> You're sure you didn't marry me just out of pity, John? Certainly not. I married you for your money. <laughs> we're going to forget everything now, except our honeymoon. Agreed? Agreed. Ah! Hey, you better fix that hair, young lady, before you can be seen with me in public. It won't take me a minute. <laughs> oh, look, I want to leave some cash with the purser for safekeeping. Why don't you run up on deck and watch us take off? Oh, I'd much rather be with you. <laughs> I promise you, a ship heading down the river is ten times as exciting as a purser and I could possibly be. I'll meet you in 15 minutes in the main deck bar. We'll drink a toast to us. There must be at least one man seeing you off. Oh, I'm just waving at anybody and everybody. My husband's with me. Good. You'll, um, pardon my curiosity, but you're much too pretty to be traveling alone. I was beginning to worry about the competition. No competition. Then we may as well be friends. I'm Kay Prentice. I'm Ruth Stanton. I mean Bowman. Just married? Does it show that much? I always forgot my married name the first couple of weeks. I've been a bride myself on occasion. The groom seasick already? No, he just had an errand to do. I'm meeting him in a few minutes. Oh, you mustn't let him out of your sight. Husbands can get lost so easily. I know. season crossing. Relieves the monotony. Purser's report, sir. Everything's in order. Nothing else? Dr. Manning's bringing his report. I'll be out on the bridge. Yes, sir. One of the passengers down already, doctor? The usual. Lady in C-42 got seasick before we left the pier. Third officer Barlow complaining of stomach pains. Barlow, huh? Too much shore leave, probably. I'd recognize that. He reported for duty, but was taken suddenly ill just a few minutes ago. Might be appendicitis. Better have been ice packs for the time being. Get him on his feet if you can. Yes, sir.
Do you wish to order, madam? Oh, in a few minutes. Oh, waiter. Yes, madam. I believe I will order now. No, no, I'll wait. Steward. Yes, madam. Can you tell me where I can find the Percy's office, please? On this deck, aft. To the rear. Oh, of course. Shall I hold the table? No, no thanks. Are you sure? Quite sure. Well, I can't understand it. Oh, we'll check the parcel room. Oh. I would like to write a check. Yes, sir. Can you tell me how long ago Mr. Bowman was here? Bowman? Yes, John Bowman. He left some cash with you. 400 is all right? Certainly. Just a moment. I'm afraid we have no record of it. Oh, you must have. He was coming right here from... This is the purser's office. Yes, ma'am. Perhaps Mr. Bowman has been delayed. If you'd care to wait, I'm sure... It's been such an awfully long time since he left our cabin. He was coming right here and then meeting me in the bar. Well, I don't think it's anything to worry about. We always run into these mix-ups around sailing time. Our departures always seem one big confusion. But he said... Why don't you go back to the bar and wait? And if he comes here first, I'll send him galloping. Thank you. Don't tell me you've lost him already. You haven't seen him, have you? Oh, of course not. You don't know him. Come on and have a drink with me. I'll stand no, watch with no, you. No, I can't. I can't really. John? John. Oh. Anything wrong, madam? Oh, yes. Would you mind opening my cabin for me? I don't have my key. Are you sure you have the right number? Well, of course. B-16. I'm afraid there's some mistake. No, this is the one. I'm in charge of this section, madam. And if I you'll don't... just open it, please. You see, there was a mistake. But, but we work here. Right here. I don't think that's possible.
But I know. This cabin has not been booked for this crossing. This cabin hasn't been opened until now. But we were here. If I could see your ticket. John has the tickets. My husband. He carried me across the... Did you say a mistake? It happens. Many cabins look like many other cabins. But I, I know we stood right here. We sat on this bed. My hat came off. I had to fix my hair. I'll bring the person. I beg your pardon. Oh, you were asking for Mr. Bowman earlier, weren't you? I presume you're Mrs. Bowman. Mrs. John Bowman. I'm afraid we have no such listing. Oh, but you have. You must have. Here's the passenger list, Mrs. Bowman. But, but our luggage was here. Everything. Luggage? That is my responsibility. There was none delivered here. Is it possible you could have been listed under another name? You and your husband, that is. I don't see how. He got the tickets. He arranged for everything. But but my luggage. Yes. Well, you see, we were married only last night, and naturally, my own name, my maiden name, was still on the luggage tags. But I don't see how that could. What name was that, Mrs. Bowman? Stanton. Ruth Stanton. Stanton. Yes, I remember that name. Luggage came aboard early. Three bags and a steamer trunk, wasn't it? Why, well, yes, but. Here we are. Ruth Stanton, cabin B-18. But it isn't B-18. It couldn't be. Shall we have a look at B-18? Yes. Yes, of course. This is your luggage, Miss Stanton? I'm Mrs. Bowman. I beg your pardon. My, my husband's luggage was with mine. What have you done with it? I assure you, ma'am, this is the only luggage delivered to this cabin. But to our cabin, to B-16. It was there. I saw it. I do think you're confused, Mrs. Bowman. This is your cabin. B-16 has not been occupied. Why are you saying that? What are you trying to do to me? I'll call the ship's doctor. Perhaps he can... I don't want the ship's doctor. I, I want my husband. Please find him for me. Oh, you won't find him. I know you won't. I'll find him. I'll find him myself. <laughs> Get Dr. Manning down here right away. It's all right. I'm Dr. Manning. Where's John? Where's my husband? We're doing everything we can. Did they tell you? I know all about it. We're trying to help you. It would help us if... Could you tell us? Did anyone aboard ship see you with your husband? Well, there was an officer near the gangplank when we first came aboard. 
He might remember. That'd be Jim Logan. Wait. There was someone else. There was a stewardess in the cabin when John and I first came in. I'll bring them in. You will probably be more comfortable in the chair. Let me no, help you. I'm all right. You'll be all right if only you'll try to relax. I'm very sorry about all this. It's enough to upset anybody. They don't believe me. They think I... It'll straighten itself out in no time, and you'll be enjoying the trip with all the rest of them. Something's happened to him. I know it. Mrs. Bowman, this is Mr. Logan, our second <laughs> officer. Jim, do you happen to recall seeing this young lady come aboard this afternoon? Distinctly. She arrived only 10 or 15 minutes before we cast off. Are you sure, among several hundred passengers? Well, this passenger, if I may say so, is much more attractive than most. Besides, her coat got caught on the rail. I unhooked it. Then you saw my husband, too. I don't remember another passenger with you. But you saw us. I'm sorry. A lot of latecomers were hurrying aboard. But I'm certain I'd have noticed someone with you. Especially a man. This is Miss Quinn, our bedroom stewardess for this section. Anna, do you recall seeing Mrs. Bowman or Mr. Bowman in B-16? Well, no, sir. I wasn't in B-16. It wasn't booked, you know. But you were there. You were arranging flowers. B-16? I'm sure there's some mistake, madam. But you must remember. My husband, he carried me over the threshold. I'm sorry, madam. I'm sure I would have remembered that. But... You need me, doctor. Nobody believes me. Do you? I'd have to know more of the facts. You think I'm lying, too. Everybody does. I've got to go and see the captain. I'd rather you rested for a while. Will you take me to see the captain? Or shall I go by myself? I'll take your turn, Mrs. Bowman. Captain will see you now, Mr. Bowman. Please sit down, Mrs. Bowman. I've filled Captain Peters in as well as I could. I know it sounds incredible, but my husband is aboard this ship. He... You've got to help me. I've already ordered a search of the ship. If your husband's aboard, we'll find him. Thank you. And now, uh, I'll want a little help from you, Mrs. Bowman. If you could uh, show me your tickets, for instance. Well, John, my husband has them. Perhaps if you could show the captain your passport. I don't have it. John took care of everything. When were you married, Mrs. Bowman? Just last night. Now, where, may I ask? Why... Actually, I don't know. It was one of those little towns in Maryland with wedding signs all along the highway, and we just stopped into one of them, and... Oh, what's the you? Yes. Oh, yes, right away. Is it possible, Mrs. Bowman, your husband could have left the ship before we sailed? Well, yes, he could have. We've but... just reached Ambrose Light, and we're about to drop the pilot. Now, it'd be a simple matter to arrange for you to return to shore with him. But he wouldn't. He wouldn't leave me. It's your last chance to leave the ship and return to New York. I'm not going to leave this ship until I find out what's happened to my husband. It was merely a suggestion. We'll forget it. Yes, let's forget it. Let's drop it. It's as easy as dropping the pilot. Mrs. Bowman, please. What? I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. Oh, Captain, everything I've told you is the truth. We want to help you all we can, Mrs. Bowman. But you can scarcely blame us for finding your story unusual, to say the least. The minute I get a report on the search, I assure you, you'll be notified. I'll show you to your cabin. A little rest, a sedative. I don't need any rest. I'm perfectly capable of finding my own cabin. You think I'm... I'm afraid you have a patient in your hands this trip. Can we have a story checked? Well, surely you don't believe any of that fantasy. I don't know. I want to find out. Well, if it'll make you any happier, I'll have the New York office radio us anything they can find out about her. But in the meantime, you keep an eye on her.
my darling, where are you? What happened? I've been frantic. I can't tell you. I'm hiding. I can't let them find me. John, I can't hear you. Are you all right? We're in terrible danger, Ruth. I'll tell you more when I can. All I can say now is don't trust anyone. Not anyone. John, can't I see you? No, not now. We're being watched, both of us. I must see you, but not now. I'll call you tomorrow night at 10. No, John. John. Oh, no. Answer me, darling. Oh, no. Operator. Oh. Operator. Oh, operator. Can you, can you trace that call for me? What call, madam? The call. I was just talking to my husband. I'm sorry. I've had no call for your number, madam. But you have. You must have. I was just talking to him this minute. Perhaps he dialed your number. I have no way of tracing a call on the dial system. Oh. Thank you. Maybe I should mind my own business, but you weren't at dinner, so I asked the stewardess to make you some broth. Oh, how nice of you. You ought to drink it while it's hot, madam. Come along. It was made especially for you. Here. Unless you need me for anything. No, all right. Oh, and thank you. How about unpacking? I'll help you. No. I mean, please don't bother. I'll, I'll do it in the morning. Well, nonsense. There's no bother at all. Oh, go ahead. It won't poison you. I guess I just don't feel like... Oh, yes. Oh, yes, hello. There's something the captain has asked me to tell you. May I come down? I'd rather meet you. Yeah, perhaps that would be better. Meet me in the main lounge. All right, I'll be right up. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm afraid you'll have to excuse me. I, I just got a call and I... Oh, dear, I, I'm terribly sorry about the broth. Oh, think nothing of it. You have a right to be a little shaky. I'll have the stewardess clean it up. I'm afraid my call disturbed you. Oh, no, it, it wasn't that. I suppose you know why I called. Captain Peters has a report on the search of the ship. He asked me to tell you your husband isn't aboard. Captain Peters is wrong. I'm sorry, Mrs. Bowman. Either your husband left the ship before we sailed. You're wrong, too. My husband is aboard this ship. Our crewmen are professionals at this sort of thing. People are always trying to stow away and always getting caught. Are you trying to suggest that my husband no, I'm is... I'm sorry, I didn't mean that. It's just that there's absolutely no chance he was missing. Everyone aboard is accounted for. That's not so. Mrs. Bowman, please. What are you trying to do to me? You, the captain, everyone. I don't understand. My husband phoned me tonight, just before you called. Mrs. Bowman, this has been a trying day for all of us. And we have done everything we could. But he phoned me. I'm as sure of that as... You don't believe me. Where did he phone you from, Mrs. Bowman? What? I don't know. He had to hang up before he could tell me. He just said he had to see me, and then suddenly I couldn't hear him anymore. But I remember the foghorn from somewhere near where he was calling. I remember that. You could have fallen asleep for a few minutes. This could have been a dream. But the foghorn, I distinctly heard you it. You heard the foghorn and you woke up. It wasn't a dream. I didn't sleep. Then I'm going to insist you try and do some sleeping now. We'll go into this again in the morning. But I... All right. I'll see you down to your cabin. 
That won't be necessary, Doctor. young lady. Would you mind telling me what you're doing up here? I could ask you the same question. I'll answer it. I followed you. That's what I heard when he called. He was here. And it wasn't a dream. All right, let's say it wasn't a dream. Let's say you could have imagined it. Imagination can play strange tricks sometimes. I wouldn't mention this to anyone if I were you. He's against me, too. They all are. Fool him. I'll pretend to agree with him. Do you, do you really think I could have imagined it? Such things can happen. I have been upset. Do you want to tell me about it? Do you think you can help me? I can try. But not here. You're freezing. Come along. I'll get you something to warm you up. Oh. Careful. Would you say that I imagined that step? <laughs> Anything you'd particularly like? Order for me, won't you? Uh, brandy, milk punch, and a scotch and soda, please. Yes, Doctor. If you want to talk now, would you like to look around some more? Oh, I guess I did it without thinking. You see, this is where everything started. It's where I was supposed to meet John. If you're uncomfortable about it, there are other bars. No, I'm not really. It was just seeing the place again. Mrs. Bowman, your conviction that your husband phoned you was very strong, wasn't it? Yes, yes, it was. You still can't really believe it was your imagination, can you? No, I can't. It was so real. You said you'd been upset about something. Do you mind telling me what it was? I'd rather not talk about it, please. Such things are hard to talk about, but sometimes it helps. Won't you let me help you? Tell me. Well, 
It all started when my father died. Oh, I'm sorry. When was that? About four months ago. You were very close to your father. Yes. I hadn't realized how much he meant to me. Until he was gone. I know how it feels to lose someone you love very much, but you still had your mother, brothers, sisters, perhaps. No, I was an only child. My mother had died when I was very young. Oh, well, then you were left all alone. Yes. I'm afraid I pretty much went to pieces for a while. I used to look around rooms, expecting to see my father walk in at any minute. I, I wouldn't go out, wouldn't see anyone except the doctor. You were ill? No, not really. And why did you see the doctor? It was just that I felt exhausted all the time. How long were you under his care? A couple of months altogether. Was he a psychiatrist? No, just our family doctor. I don't want to talk about it anymore. Please. When you looked around the rooms for your father, did you ever think you saw him? Did you? No, of course not. But you couldn't help looking. Why? because of so many years of seeing him around. It's only natural, like looking for John here tonight. What did the doctor prescribe? He wanted me to get a change of scene. You went away? I went to New York and I met John. And everything changed for me. Suddenly I was happy and well again. Did John by any chance remind you of your father? Well, he was tall. He had a certain air of authority about him that you're not trying to suggest that John is just in my imagination. I didn't say that. But it is possible to create a father image, especially in a case like yours where you felt so badly in need of one. He's not a father image. He's my husband. And he's in danger, terrible danger. We both are. That's why he phoned me, to warn me. What did he warn you about? You don't believe I have a husband. You won't believe this either. I can't believe or disbelieve anything till you tell me. I won't tell you. I won't tell anyone. Let me alone. Careful, Ruth. You can't take chances. If you make a scene, he'll tell the captain. You don't want to miss John's call. Pretend. I'm sorry. I know you're trying to help. I get so confused, I'm not sure of anything. I feel so much better after this talk with you. I just hope I haven't taken up too much of your time. I was about to suggest you take up some more of it. A couple of days' normal activities, some games, a little talk. Yes, I think that would help. I don't want to monopolize you. Then I'll change the suggestion to an order. All right, Doctor. This comes under the heading of doctor's orders, too. Take two. They seldom bite. It'll calm you down. Captain. Good morning. The patient showing any improvement? Blood count's normal, but the pain's still severe. I've kept him in ice packs. Oh, no, 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 Barlow. That girl, what's her name? Stanton. Oh, Mrs. Bowman. She was quite disturbed last night. I had to give her a sedative to help her sleep. I'm calling on you to keep an eye on her. I want a crazy woman running around loose. I don't think she's crazy, Captain. Too strong a word, perhaps. 
Will you settle for hallucinations? It's more like it. Nevertheless, have I your permission to radio the Bureau of Missing Persons in New York? Well, what on earth for? I want them to check on the whereabouts of John Bowman. Well, that's going a bit far, isn't it? We know he isn't aboard this ship. Captain, I'm sure she's not intentionally lying. I'd like to get to the bottom of it. Dr. Manning, you're not by any chance being influenced by a pretty face. Of course I'm not. I just feel sorry for her. She seems terribly frightened of someone or something. I'd like to help her. Well, Doctor, remember you're the ship's surgeon. You're not a detective. You can send your radiogram, practice your psychoanalysis all you want. Keep her under observation. See that she doesn't cause any trouble. Yes. The responsibility is yours. Good morning, Mrs. Bowman. Oh, good morning, Mrs. Bowman. I have just come to see you. I have here a little book. It might pass the time a bit for you. Oh, it, it was good of you to think of me. I have thought of you very often. It's concern, aren't you? Thank you. I, I'll return it. You've got to start simmering down, young lady. Oh, I'm sorry. I... Last night I suggested a couple of days normal activity. You want me to spell out the word normal for you? Can I ask you a favor? Within reason. I haven't really seen much of the ship. Would a conducted tour be within the realm of normal activity? That might be just the medicine you need. All right, let's try a few doses of it. I wasn't asking the favor for myself. It was really for John. I hoped somehow somewhere I'd find him. What's in if I just kept looking. That's the luggage. They told me they'd search the ship, but I wasn't satisfied. I wanted to make sure, and I kept thinking I might find a place they had forgotten. What did they do? I can't But Dr. Manning insisted I relax and try some games. I didn't want to, but I pretended to enjoy myself. And then I wasn't sure I was pretending. He was good company, and I needed to relax, even for a few short hours. Oh! <laughs> Mrs. Bowman, be careful! This is not the safest place in the world. What's happened? Where are you, darling? I've looked everywhere for you. I've got to find you.
John. Bowman here? Yes, sir. I called your office to report, but there was no answer. I was out looking for her. We lost track of her for an hour. Oh, there she is. Here. Comfortable night. I was awake waiting for the phone to ring again. And then I, I wondered if he really called at all. You know, people are not supposed to prowl around the luggage hole without a member of the crew. Oh, so. So they told you. That hole was ransacked thoroughly when they searched the ship. You must trust us, Ruth. You can't go on being suspicious of everybody. Take that man you saw down there. The steward was opening his trunk for him to get a book. That sounds so villainous. No, oh, I am sorry. So we've eliminated one suspect at least. It's just that I, I feel so frustrated and helpless because I can't do anything to help John. We're doing everything we can. We're even checking with the Bureau of Missing Persons in New York in case your husband left the ship before we sailed. Well, for the life of me, I can't understand why he would. He seems so nice. He acts as if he really wants to help me. But how can I be sure when I know he still doesn't believe me? If I could only learn more about him. Dr. Manning. Paul. Paul, there's something I've been wanting to ask you. It's probably a question everyone asks. <laughs> I've been waiting for this. Ship's doctors and dime down scales all get it. How does a nice person like you get into this business? You're young, you have talent. Why waste it as a ship's doctor? Oh, no. Don't make fun of me. After all, I've told you a lot about myself. Well, in books, the ship's doctor is usually a man with a shadow over him. Turns out he murdered his wife and is trying to forget. And you haven't murdered your wife? Through no fault of my own, I never had a wife. Well, then, if you're not trying to hide anything, and there's nothing to forget. Well, take this crossing. 1,400 passengers in my care. No specialist to run to if they break out in a rash or fracture a kneecap. I've saved the lives of people I've never seen before and will never see again. I don't know which it is I like more, the feeling of responsibility or the feeling of power. I don't know many men who could play God so many times in the course of a year. Now, what are you thinking? It just occurred to me, I, I don't really know my own husband. Everything happened so fast for us, the way we met, the times we saw each other, our wedding. We were going to get acquainted on this trip, and now, instead, I, I seem to be getting acquainted with you. Hello there. 
Come on, I'll race you the length of the pool. Oh, no, thanks. I was just about to go and get dressed. You know, I, I just remembered something that happened the day we sailed that might help explain Ruth's story. She was waving goodbye to somebody on shore. But when I asked her who it was, she said no one. No one? That's very odd. Well, she explained she was just waving because everything was so gay and she felt so happy. Possible, but strange. It's also possible she really was waving goodbye to someone on shore. Someone she hasn't told us about. Or her husband, perhaps. Thank you, Mrs. Prentice. That's very interesting. Just a minute. Mrs. Bowman, please let me talk to you. What were you doing in B-16? Oh, darling, don't make it sound like international spies. It was simply that we were curious about the cabin, and I asked the stewardess to let us in. We thought we might find something to help make sense of your story. But we're poor detectives. We didn't find a shred of evidence. You're all so patient with me. I, I really didn't mean to. Will you excuse me now? Thank you very much. Just a little while. Well, you know how long it takes a woman to dress. Yes, I, I will. Oh, I beg your pardon. I didn't know you were here. Anything wrong? Oh, no, nothing. You startled me, that's all. I was just going to turn down the bed, but it can wait. No, go right ahead. I'm going out now, really. Mrs. Bowman, can I speak to you for a moment? Why, of course. I've been waiting for this chance to tell you about your husband. Yes. I mean, about not seeing your husband with you. Oh. We see so many new people on sailing day. Maybe I forgot. Or maybe you saw another stewardess. Anyway, I'm sorry. That's all right. If there's anything I can do. No, nothing. Anna, are you alone? She just went up to dinner with the doctor. It's all working out just the way we want it. Everybody thinks she's crazy. Yes. Whenever you say. But be careful. Thank <laughs> you. 
John. John. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm terribly sorry. Shall we go in? Fred, I won't be a very cheerful dinner companion. And I'll prescribe a little champagne. We'll see if that'll help. Pardon me, Doctor. There's a telephone call for you. Would you please check with the switchboard operator? Thank you. Excuse me one job as quick as I can. Albert Stanton, President Stanton Iron Steel Corporation, Philadelphia, died four months ago. Ruth, greatly disturbed by father's death, was ill and under a doctor's care. When she left Philadelphia five days ago, assumed destination New York. Neither Stanton housekeeper nor doctor knows of a John Bowman, and a positive Miss Stanton not married. Hollister, managing director. Well, that confirms what I thought all along. Of course she's not married. You ready to believe it now, doctor? This seems to be pretty conclusive. Mm -hmm. Perhaps she'll stop believing it, too, when you show her that. Captain Peters, do you mind if I show it to her later, after dinner? She's still pretty upset, and I'd like to break it to her gently. We've been altogether too gentle with her. It's time we showed some concern for the rest of the passengers. She hasn't made any trouble. Oh, well, not yet. Her condition, there's no telling what she might do. We don't want a suicide aboard the ship. She's to be confined to her quarters for the rest of the voyage. I'm afraid, sir, that might do more damage than good. I've got to know her pretty well during the past few days. I'm sure this hallucination or delusion is the result of something temporary. An emotional setback or disturbance and can be corrected. There's nothing violent about it. I assure you she won't get out of hand. Well, that may be. This isn't a case for you to handle, Doctor. It's for a professional psychiatrist. Possibly it is, but it's still wrong to make a prisoner of her. Such a shock at this critical time might do irreparable harm. She needs help, not punishment. All right. Handle it your own way, Doctor. For the time being. Thank you, sir. I pour your wine, madam? Oh, yes, you may as well. <laughs> one for Dr. Manning, too. Sorry I had to run away. You were with the captain. Oh, yes, I came in with him. Let's stop worrying about things, shall we, and enjoy our dinner? been all over this ship with you, but this is new, isn't it? Oh, we're out of the residential section. Commercial district. Shops, offices, so on. Aren't you overworking, Miss Bridges? Just straightening up, Doctor. That's fine. Thank you very much. Good night, Doctor. Good night, Mrs. Bowman. I want to talk to you alone, Ruth. Won't you sit down? It was the captain I was with earlier. This radiogram came to him just before dinner. Tell me the truth. We're going to get to the bottom of this. Oh, I, I have told you the truth, Paul. Then why did you say that radiogram was not so? Because it isn't so. They don't know about John back home. How is it possible they wouldn't know about your marriage? Because I, I didn't tell them. Why not? You must have had a reason. I did have. What was it? Oh, I can't tell you. I can't tell you. The day we sailed, you waved goodbye to someone on the pier. What do you mean? You were standing at the rail waving at someone. How did you know that? Never mind. Who was it? It was nobody. 
I was just so happy. Was it your husband? No, of course not. He was on the ship. He still is. He phoned me. I thought we agreed that phone call was in your imagination. I knew it wasn't. I lied to you. Now we're getting somewhere. Why did you lie to me? I was afraid. Of me? Of everybody. I was afraid they'd lock me in my cabin because nobody believes me. And I don't want that. I've got to find John before something happens. Well, don't you see? If he could have called you, he could just as easily have called the ship's officers. Oh, you don't understand. He's afraid to talk to anybody but me. He's in danger, terrible danger. We both are. Who could possibly benefit by the death of you or your husband? A man I hardly know. Who is it? He's my father's half-brother, Fred. He was always in trouble. Dad always had to pull him out of it. He actually resented Dad for helping him. He had to blame someone for his own weakness, so he, he blamed Dad. It's a familiar pattern. He finally sold out his interest to Dad, but it didn't take him long to go through the money. Four months ago, he was back in Philadelphia. I heard him and Dad have a terrible argument. When he found out that Dad had willed the company to me, he, he actually threatened him. Said he'd stop at nothing to gain control of his interests again. They almost came to blows. Then Fred left. It was... It was only a few days later that... Dad had his heart attack and died. Have you told this to anyone else? Only to John. You're not alone, Ruth. We'll do everything to protect you. But you never believed me about John. It's possible I never wanted to believe you had a husband. Whatever happens, we'll see this through together. Right now, I'm going to take you down to your cabin and you're going to get some sleep. Thank you, Paul. Paul, I... I'm not afraid anymore. Boat deck, darling. Near the lifeboats. Port side. Right away, can you? And Ruth, be careful. Don't let anyone see you. Oh, wait for me. I'll be right there. John, what happened? Oh, Come John. over here where we won't be seen. First we had a wonderful cabin, and then all of a sudden we didn't we have, have it. And when I, I tried to tell them they don't believe me, they think I'm crazy. And then when you called and said don't trust anyone, I was so afraid because I didn't know who it was who was trying to... Someone's coming. Meet me here later tonight, 2 o'clock. John! John!
thought you'd gone to Can bed. Can I steal your Mr. Logan for a dance? My pleasure. Excuse me. Find Mrs. Bowman to her cabin at once for the remainder of the voyage. Yes, sir. Oh, no. You can't lock me up. Oh, please, you mustn't. She'll be asleep in just a few minutes. This is Mrs. Bowman. I've got to see Dr. Manning. I've got to see him right away. I took the call. I've had a rapid recovery. Where is Paul? Please get him for me. Haven't you taken up enough of his time as it is? Oh, but I must see him. He'll call on you in the morning when he makes his rounds. Oh, it has to be now. I suggest you go back to bed and stop this nonsense. Oh, please. You don't understand. Please get him for me. You're not ill. And you're not going to get the doctor down here to hold your hand over something you've imagined. Good night, Mrs. Bell. Still awake, Barlow? Couldn't sleep. Too much lying in bed, I guess. What was all that racket I heard a couple of hours ago? Mrs. Bowman again. I'll give you a sedative. You've had your hands full with her, haven't you? Yes. Tonight she got quite violent. <laughs> Sounds like she's off a rocker. Everyone seems to think so, including the captain. I'm not to show myself. Something peculiar going on. I'd like to get to the bottom of it. Something else out, too. Your pulse remains normal, but you still have the pains. I'll take the sedative anyway. Sleep won't hurt you. Well, actually, I won't need it. I've been feeling much better. Don't be surprised to see me up and around by tomorrow. Glad to hear it. Good night. Good night. Oh. 
Oh, I hope you don't have any more trouble with, uh, what's her name? Mrs. Bowman? I won't. The captain's had her confined to her cabin. Well, Anna, this is Jack. Jack? No, oh, she's asleep. She had an injection. Wouldn't tomorrow night be better? Tomorrow's our last night out. We can't take the chance. It's got to be now. Let her think she escaped, but see that she gets out of the cabin. All right, Jack. Worrying about you, Mrs. Bowman, and decided to look in. Is there anything I can do? Why, yes, there is something. I started for a glass of water, but I'm so drowsy. Do you suppose you could course? I'll get it for you. Where is Mrs. Bowman? She, I, I, I was just trying to get her to sleep and she ran out. I was just trying to call you, Doctor. I'm so afraid I wasn't going to get here. Come on over here. No, we must go to the captain and show him I was right all no, the time. No, no, come on. Oh, but, John, we must. No, we're not going to the captain. Then to Dr. Manning, he'll protect us, darling. We won't need protection. What do you mean? Everything's worked out just the way I wanted it. You made a perfect fool of yourself. They're all sure you're out of your mind. No. When you're missing, they'll think it was suicide. No! That money of yours won't do you no. any good anymore. No! You've had it all your life at somebody else's turn. No!
and I've been so blind. I was in love with him. I thought I believed him. He came into your life when you desperately needed someone. You wanted to believe him. Now everything he ever said and did is like a terrible nightmare. Only worse because it was real. Ruth, listen to me. You've got to put it out of your mind, the whole thing. It was a nightmare, but your eyes are open now. It's over, Ruth. All over. You've got tomorrow to think of. Lots of tomorrows after that. I know you're right, Paul, but if only something could make it go away for me. Drink this. It'll warm you up. I've come to offer my apologies, Mrs. Bowman. You don't have to apologize, Captain. It's over now. It's all over. The stewardess gave us a full confession. She'll be handed over to the authorities when we dock. After we talked to her, we found these in Barlow's cabin. Your passport and your marriage certificate. I'll take those, Captain, until she needs them. Mrs. Bowman, speaking for myself and every member of my crew, we're sincerely sorry. I'm very glad I was so wrong about you. Thank you, Captain Peters. Good night. Good night. Now drink your toddy, young lady, and get yourself to bed. One of those tomorrows I mentioned will be around before you know it. Paul. Paul, I... I hope you know how grateful I am for everything. Now you know what I mean about the ship's doctor playing God. Maybe now you'll have some time for the other passengers. We'll talk about that tomorrow. Good night. Good night. Thank you.